All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a repeating group as a single cell repeating group that will actually fill and show all of its content, meaning all of the results from the repeating group. Now, I'm doing this inside of a page that I set up previously as a sort of skeleton for a dashboard. So if you didn't see that video, go ahead and check out that video to see how we got all of this functionality already put into place. So I'm gonna to continue to work inside of my floating group side menu here, which is where I'm gonna end up putting together the uh, repeating group. So to get started with this, I'm just gonna get rid of this image element. I'm not gonna be using it. I'm gonna first draw out a group inside of my floating group here. And so let's get that group put together there. I'm gonna end up changing the layout and let's get this layout set up. I want the layout to be aligned to parent and I'm gonna put the width at 320 because that is the same as the floating group width and there's no reason for it to be expanding out of that. I, and now my minimum height is gonna be set to 60. I'm gonna keep it at fit height to content so that as more results in that repeating group are being returned, the height of its container, which is this container uh, that we're looking at, is going to actually expand out. So now what I wanna do is I wanna end up putting a repeating group inside of that container. So let's get the repeating group and just click it right into there. All right, now, first thing I wanna do is set this up into be the non-ant and centered. I wanna put the minimum height at 60 and I wanna put the width to be 320. And let's come into the appearance tab and I want number of rows to be one. Now, uh, even though I want it to be one, Bubble has this new option inside of repeating groups to set fixed number of rows. I'm gonna uncheck that because this way, I'm gonna make sure that it will uh, allow for all of the results to be shown. I'm gonna get min minimum height set back to 60 so that it's gonna be the correct height. I'm also gonna get rid of my style on here uh, and let's get the separator down to none and I'm gonna show all items immediately and my data source is going to be an option set that I created in the previous video where we set up the skeleton for the dashboard. And that option set is used for my navigation. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that navigation live and select all options and put the type of content to be the same there. And now when I have my repeating group set up, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a group inside of it and I can't see anything. Uh, Bubble's not giving me any kind of red indicator that I am inside of the repeating group. This is a holdover, bad user experience from the previous responsive engine where when you have a single cell repeating group, they don't show any kind of red to give you a border of it. They only would show you a border of the first cell when you have more than one cell. So uh, the other kind of holdover is that I have no ability to uncheck group uh, and make it so that I'm not forced into drawing and then deleting. And so let's just get rid of that and let's make it so that we can see this repeating group uh, to adjust for the bad user experience of not seeing any kind of a uh, red outline. So now when I get my group, I will know where I need to click. I'm clicking right into that repeating group. And again, terrible user experience with this width and height being such a large setting, they need to make something so that it's more focused on the size of the container. And let's go ahead and put that at zero and zero. And so let's see here. My repeating group uh, is the non-ant. That is from its parent container. The repeating group's layout should also be aligned to parent. And so now inside of that, I can put my group to be in the centered non-ant as well. All right, so now that I've got that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and make the repeating group uh, change its color back to none. And now I've got my group set up and my group layout is gonna be fixed because the only real thing I'm doing inside of here is going to be putting a text element to actually display the um, value of the cell. And so let's see that got in there correctly, all right. And so let's get this uh, positioned into where we need it to be at zero and zero. Let's get the width at 320 and the height at 60. Let's set this text up to remove the style and let's get it centered there. 
And I'm also going to uh, put a one line spacing and center it vertically. I, now, this is actually something that inside of the new responsive engine, uh, you actually have a little bit more flexibility in the way that you are setting up your text elements. And I'm really hoping that they put together some features that have been requested to make it possible for us to have basically responsive text styles. Uh, so one of the things that I'm going to end up doing in here is I'm actually going to change that group layout. I'm going to change it to be uh, aligned to parent. And now my text element, I'm going to have it centered in that non ant. I'm going to put the min width at zero. And you can see how the text automatically as the element gets shrunk and it is staying centered there. So we don't need to go through with doing center text vertically. I can uncheck that now uh, and it will be fine. I'm going to change the sizing on this. Let's go ahead and just make it a little bit larger. Uh, let's get it at 24. Uh, one thing I am going to do is put my horizontal padding and make that 20. Uh, because I'm not going to actually have it centered, I'm going to make it left aligned so that it's off to the left. I need to get things set up inside of the group to take the repeating group's content type. So the group is going to have the content type to be that option navigation live. The data source will be current cells options navigation live. My text is going to take that parent group's option navigation live's display value to be able to show it. And so now that I've got that set up, you can see that it actually fills out even more because it's trying to display all the content, which in this is the dynamic expression. I, Bubble should probably change that behavior. Uh, that's going to end up causing issues uh, in other areas. But for right now, it's fine. And what I'm going to do on this group is I'm going to put a conditional and say what, when this group is hovered, I want to change the background style and make it flat color. Oh, I already had the flat color, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the uh, color. Why is that not coming up with background? What's going on here? My appearance, to, let's get rid of the style on this. Background style, put it to flat color one. Uh, I'm going to put it at zero here of opacity so that when I come into my conditional, I could just simply say that the um, conditional is going to be when this group is hovered. Let's change the color on it to the background color and let's make it a sort of gray and let's just give it a little bit less there. So now we can see how that's going to look when you hover over it. And you can do other things. This isn't about design and the way that things look and style. This is about design in the new responsive engine and how it behaves. So right now, I think things should be set up to behave as I expect them to. What I want to do now, though, is I want to actually set up the workflow. And this workflow is going to be set up to do a navigation go to page. I'm going to be going to the same page, which is called Dashboard Live here. I'm going to send more parameters. The parameter is called section. So again, if you didn't watch the previous video about setting up your dashboard skeleton, go ahead and do that. The idea of it is that these different groups, which are our containers, all have conditionals looking at the section URL to see if it is the correct section. So this is what I'm doing here, and I'm going to set it off as the current cells option navigations display so that that value gets in there and we should be able to navigate properly. So let's go ahead and preview this. All right, so now I've got the page previewed. You can see inside of here, I've got that uh, repeating group showing all seven. And when I'm clicking onto these, you can see the different colors showing up for those different sections as the URLs parameters being changed. All right, section one and everything down to six are set at to be like 600, while section seven is larger. And that's why we get the scroll bar onto it to accommodate for that. So typically when I'm building out my dashboards, I have more than one repeating group. And that's because I have different kind of options depending upon uh, my approach for the particular app I'm building. And in that instance, what I want to do right now is set things up to make sure that this floating group is actually going to be responsive in its height, meaning there will be a scroll bar added when needed in terms of adjusting for content. 
So testing real quick here, I'm just grabbing my uh, page height and decreasing the height of the page. And you can see as I hit to the bottom of the repeating group, I get this uh, scroll bar here, okay? Now I also get this terrible horizontal scroll bar. Uh, the reason for that is because my content is set to be the same width as the floating group, which is 320. And when you have a scroll bar added on to it, uh, Bubble is not adjusting the widths of your content to shrink, and instead it's adding the uh, scroll bar horizontally to adjust for that. So let's take a look at what we can do to fix that. All right, so the best approach to be able to fix that is to make sure that you are not using fixed width on these elements that need to adjust to accommodate for a scroll bar. And so I'm going to just basically get rid of the fixed width on this. I'm gonna get rid of the min width and just put it down to be zero. Do the same thing on the repeating group and get that down to zero. Do the same thing on that group that's containing the options and put that down to zero. And the same thing for my text element and get rid of it down to zero. So now when we come back in here and preview the page and then we scroll up, or rather not scroll up, but adjust the height of the page to bring that up, you can see what ends up happening is we get our scroll bar and we don't have the horizontal and these are just adjusting as they should. And so as we look at this, we are all set. So the use case of uh, the single cell repeating group expanding to fill up the uh, entire contents, meaning show every item, you don't need to only make it show every item. You can set things up to be using in conjunction with pagination. Personally, every single uh, repeating group that I put into my apps, I use the single cell approach like this. And I end up making it so that I have containers that will automatically allow it to have a scroll bar when the content requires it if I'm wanting to basically make it so that I only see a certain number of items in that repeating group before it hits into a scroll. I use it in pagination and everything, uh, but just to give you a sense of why I'm doing this here, it's not just the only use case uh, inside of a side menu. There's a lot of other reasons why I do it throughout all of my apps. So I hope that this was helpful, getting you to understand a little bit more about how repeating groups are working inside of the new responsive engine, as well as helping you to understand a little bit more about how to put together your dashboards or single page applications. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.